Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Welcome to Inventory. Today we want to talk about undemanded sequels. Uh, sequels to films that you didn't even know had sequels, that often have a tangential, at best, connection to the movies that inspired them. Um, I want to start with one of the more egregious examples I know, which is The Cell 2, the sequel to the 2000 thriller uh, The Cell, starring Jennifer Lopez. Lopez plays a character named Catherine Dean, who can uh, enter the minds of killers. Where you and there's really the thinnest of connective tissue between the two of them. It opens with some footage from the cell and said there was Catherine Dean. You know, had the various powers she did. Catherine Dean was one of them. And says something like, and there's another one. Now, there's another. <laughs> and that's how we go to this really, really low budget sequel um, starring Tessie Santiago. I could go into his conscious mind, I could see what he see right now. And it kind of has the Murder, She Wrote rule where the highest build guest star is obviously the killer. This is Duncan, one of my deputies. Hi. Come on, let's go check it out. In the midst of all these, um, you know, very D-list stars, you get a C-list star like Frank Whaley. Let me take your pulse. It's okay, I used to be an EMT. You kind of know that Frank Whaley's going to have a bigger part to play than you might suspect. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to scare you. We spent a little bit of money at the end where it looks like they're kind of doing a demo reel for Adobe After Effects. Does it leave any unanswered questions uh, for Cell 3 to pick up? Uh, the precedent has been set that you don't really need that much connected tissue between uh, between sequels in the Cell franchise. And then another one and then, has the same and power. now there is a third one. Do you have a better undemanded sequel that uh, we could talk about? I have something. Okay. Uh, and, uh, have you seen the film Donnie Darko? I have. Do you enjoy the film Donnie Darko? I did. Okay, it's this cult favorite starring Jake Gyllenhaal, directed by Richard Kelly. Would a sequel sound interesting to you? I'm of intrigued. Of course it would. Let me tell you about S. Darko. S. Darko has all your favorites back. Donnie Darko's little sister, Samantha. Uh, nobody else. <laughs> it takes place not in the 80s, but seven years later, and she and a friend are traveling cross-country from Virginia to California, and then a lot of strange Donnie Darko-y things start happening to them. She can see the future, you know, the world is going to end in X amount of time, just like in, in, in Donnie Darko, and so all these elements are the same, and there are various callbacks to the original movie. How to be some connection between what happened to Sam and Donnie. Everyone remembers the great sequence in Donnie Darko set to Tears for Fears, Head Over Heels. Where all the major characters are introduced and it's done in this incredible style. Here they try to do the same thing except to the novelty hit by the band Whale, Hobo Hump and Slobo Babe, except it doesn't have nearly the same impact. It's kind of a a weird straight-to-video facsimile of what Donnie Darko was, and it's really bad. <laughs> Your film, I, I understand, is maybe a, a little less ambitious? Well, I have two films, actually. Uh, I have Revenge of the Nerds 3, Next Generation, and 4, uh, Nerds in Love. Now, Revenge of the Nerds 1984, to me, is one of the better of the raunchy 80s sex comedies. <laughs> Both Next Generation from 92 and uh, Nerds in Love from 94 are straight to TV movies. So they remove any nudity, uh, any bad language, uh, anything that has any kind of edge whatsoever. Your heck week is about to begin now. Uh, Next Generation is actually a marginally interesting film. The nerds are now in charge at Adams College. The jocks are marginalized. They turn the gymnasium into the computer science center. And then Morton Downey Jr. decides to mobilize the jocks uh, with the help of Ted McGinley. You could be remembered as the guys who take the campus back! Yeah! The film also features an appearance by a semi-Anthony Edwards look-alike. Hi, Lewis. Gilbert. Want it? Someone who looks like Anthony Edwards, but not as handsome. <laughs> the film that follows that one, Nerds in Love, has uh, the nerds gathering for Booger's wedding, and really has, it's really nothing to do with the general style of the first three films. Nerds! 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 
or there's some you know, on-demand sequels that actually are interesting. Well, off the top of my head, I, I wouldn't, even, wouldn't even call it good. The director had his name removed, but uh, the sequel to Cabin Fever, Cabin Fever 2, it's a good, ambitious effort that you wouldn't necessarily expect from something that would be straight to video, straight to DVD. Behold the nerd child. For more on-demand sequels, visit avclub.com. <laughs>